that was crazy. Yo, those are fire. Where'd you get those from? Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, because we are so hyped about today's topic. We started things a little differently by airing our new Street Fleece campaign video. We really hope you liked it because we were really wanting to debut it to all of you first. We are such believers in the potential of the fleece category. So today's episode will cover everything you need to know about this apparel sector that's on the rise. Welcome back to those who joined our last broadcast and welcome to all of our new faces here today. We appreciate your feedback from our last Bella Canvas Live, and we're so glad you all enjoyed the content. For anyone who missed that episode, we talked about what the future looks like for our industry during and after the pandemic. You can check out our entire first episode anytime by streaming it from our website at bellacanvas.com backslash live or catch it on our Bella Canvas YouTube channel. Before we dive in, a few housekeeping items. We'll be live for about 45 minutes, including the Q&A portion at the end. And if you need to leave us, don't worry, we'll send you a link so you can replay this webinar later. Now we are so excited to begin today's episode where we talk all things fleece. We all know that COVID-19 has acted as a major accelerator to many fashion and societal trends that were already emerging pre-coronavirus. For example, the rise of casual dressing and that might just be the understatement of the century. For years, fashion has been trending toward a more casual, comfortable style of dressing, but now that acceleration has hit lightning speed. Today we're doing a deep dive into fleece, one of the biggest opportunities for growth in the decorated apparel industry right now. At Bella Canvas, we made huge investments pre-COVID-19 into fleece because the massive opportunity in this category was so clear to us from the beginning. And remember, we were focusing on fleece before it got a turbo boost from most of the American labor force working from home rather than in the office. You should also be looking at fleece in the same way as a huge growth opportunity, whether you're a distributor or a decorator. In today's episode, we'll cover the big reasons how and why you should see dollar signs when you think of fleece. Plus, we'll discuss how to sell and position premium fleece styles, along with standout decoration ideas your customers will love. Speaking of decorated fleece, we asked for submissions of your favorite decorated fleece items when you registered for this broadcast. We want to take a moment to thank everyone who submitted your fleece prints and want to show some of the submissions that we received. You can see we have the GERT, I hope I'm saying these right, Wanderheart Project, and Always Customs. Let us know what you think of these decorating ideas in the chat. Personally, I like the top left corner one. I think it's great, monochrome style. So now let's get to the good stuff. Today, we're bringing in two of our very best, Chris Blakesley, president of Bella Canvas and Megan Spire, vice president of sales. Chris will interview our special guest, Tom Davenport, founder of Ink Kitchen and our print guru, who will give us a rundown on simple fleece decorating techniques you won't wanna miss. Later, we'll share a virtual sit-down interview with our friend Zach Morgan from CC Creations about how his shop is making a significant profit from selling decorated fleece and how you can do it too. At the end, we'll wrap up with a Q&A. So if you have any questions at any time, send them over through the chat on your right if you're on your desktop and below if you're on your phone. And we'll answer as many of your questions as we can at the end. Okay, let me allow everyone to come on and introduce themselves and TF what they'll be sharing today. Hi, Chris and Megan. Hi, Tom. All right, Cl Chris, we'll hey, start Claire. with you. Hey, Claire. Right. Awesome. Hey well, hi, everybody. I'm uh, Chris Blakesley, president here at Bella Canvas, and I'm going to talk to you today about the fleece category as a whole and give you some perspective on why you should focus on selling it now. Plus, I'm going to get into the margins in the category and how all of that translates into money-making opportunities that you have around this pretty interesting category. Hey, guys. I'm Megan, Vice President of Sales. Uh, first, I'll talk about the cultural movement we're experiencing today and how it's led to the explosion in this category. And then I'll go into how to sell into fleece, and we'll share how CC Creations has had tremendous success with Texas, uh, with fleece in Texas, uh, no less, with tips straight from the field. Hey, everybody. I'm Tom, expert decorator for Bella Canvas. 
Today, I'm going to be talking about how to create a high level of perceived value with decoration techniques on fleece. Okay, thanks everyone. I'm super excited to hear all of you speak today. And let's get started by kicking it off to Chris. All right, thanks so much, Claire. And uh, on behalf of everybody here at Bella Canvas, I just want to say thanks again for joining us uh, this month. We had a great time with you last month and we're excited to share some game-changing statistics and strategies around fleece products and how you can take advantage. So with that, let's jump right in. So just a few years ago, we started focusing our attention on fleece as a category for two reasons. First, the acceleration of fleece as a staple item at retail and within high fashion brands. And then second, the realizable margin potential for all of you as customers in our industry. If you've been around the industry for a while, you might recall that about 10 years ago, the t-shirt category in our industry was dominated by cheap trade basic products that were really made specifically for and were actually only available in our industry. And then the landscape shifted toward premium tees to where today true fashion premium tees like Bella Canvas product make up about one third of total industry basic units or about 400 million units sold each year just in the United States. Now, fleece as a category is not far today from where t-shirts were 10 years ago. Fashion premium fleece is beginning to have its moment in our industry and the growth will be substantial over the next few years. So long story short, now is the time to get involved. So in addition to the overall trend, as a percentage of sales in 2020, fleece will likely be higher than normal because of the COVID impact on demand earlier this year. As we all know, the fall winter season, which is normally peak time for fleece products anyway, will likely be the closest to normal demand that we've seen in the industry this year. Now we think that we're less than two years into the great fleece transition in our industry. So we're all actually on the ground floor of a huge opportunity that we have in front of us. And you won't be surprised that our advice is to start selling fleece now so that your business really benefits. Today, premium fashion fleece composes about 5% of basic unit volume in our industry, but we expect that percentage to double or triple in the next couple of years, up to 13 to 15%. And that's strong growth that you can't afford to miss out on. And what's even more compelling is that even if premium fleece hits just 10% of industry unit sales and basics, because the average prices are three to four times that of t-shirts, fleece will actually drive over 30% of apparel category sales, which is huge. At Bella Canvas, we've actually seen our fleece sales double each of the past two years. And we've attempted to style all of our products in line with the street fashion trends playing out at retail to position you to take advantage of making that connection for your customers. And also through innovation, we found ways to make lightweight fleece look heavier so that it actually wears lighter and that extends the category more than just seasonally while still connecting to that whole street vibe that we see at retail. And actually we also see that kind of ultra heavy oversized pop culture fleece trend that we all have seen over the past couple of years. We see it dissipating rapidly, which is leading consumers back to luxury and uh, premium uh, fleece styles every day. Now, if you followed us, you know that we talk a lot about how retail and our industry are getting closer every year. And the millennial and Gen Z buyers who make up a large portion of the consumers from our industry are following influencers who embrace premium fleece. So it's all over pop culture. And Megan's gonna talk more about this, but streetwear designers, new celebrity fashion brands, they all lead with fleece items. So we know that fleece is here and now, but it's also the future. And in fact, these days, streetwear's surge is the result of large cultural shifts, including the trend toward casual wear and working from home. And all of this got accelerated by the pandemic, as we discussed in last month's broadcast. It's also emblematic of a shift in power between the apparel brands and the consumers. And now brands and fashion houses take their cues from the consumer rather than the under, other way around. Now, in just a few minutes, Megan's going to touch on fleece as a dominant trend in fashion. But before we do that, let's spend some time talking about margin potential. So we all know that our industry is dominated by T-shirts. In fact, 
crew neck unisex t-shirts make up about 70% of industry sales in basics. But you can't look at every unit equally. And when we talk to our promo distributor customers, they tell us that the standard margin they, they make on cheaper trade basic tees is about 25 to 30%. But for a premium t-shirt, we're often told that margins can be in the 35 to 40% range or even more. Now clearly for the work involved, premium products are always better because they have higher prices and higher margins. So with so many t-shirt units being sold in our industry, it can be hard at times to stand out in the crowd. Now we have a whole lesson on commoditization in our fashion apparel masterclass that you all should check out. But basically this means that you need to find ways to differentiate. Otherwise you can spend just as many hours working on a lower profit sale as you would on a higher margin opportunity. And in the wholesale industry, we've watched t-shirts evolve as they converted out of cheap trade basics and into premium options over the past 10 years. Now I would guess many of you, if you could go back in time, knowing what you know now, you would have focused earlier on hitting the market with premium tees. Now we can't give you the time machine, but we can make sure that you realize that you are at the same point today in fleece that you were at with t-shirts 10 years ago. Today's the ground floor, so strike while the iron is hot. Now, you also know that we always advocate selling value and quality over price. And while you can definitely take this approach in the t-shirt category, it's actually even easier to do it when you're selling fleece. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, fleece as a category is less commoditized. There just aren't as many brands offering retail quality product at wholesale prices. You can sell on fit, fabric, color, and quality instead of just price. It also works for just about every type of buyer. And third, fleece has a higher perceived value. It's also a layering piece which can keep you comfortably warm all year long. Not to mention, it's a more expensive fabrication as well. And we know that customers are used to paying higher prices for fleece products at retail. So charging a higher price within the channel is actually what they already expect. And as Tom's gonna to get into a little bit later, you can increase your margin even more through standout decoration that doesn't break your bank. So let's go through a little exercise together to make these numbers more understandable. So let's say hypothetically, you're gonna sell 8,000 units of our award-winning 3001 t-shirt and your all-in decorated cost is $5 and you sell it for $9, making $4 of gross profit per shirt or a total of $32,000 of gross profit on the order. So we're gonna do a quick poll question. Approximately how many Bella Canvas hoodies do you think you would have to sell to make the same gross profit on the order? So we're gonna give you about 10 seconds to get your answers in. All right, answers are coming in. Okay, so if you guessed about 2,600, you're correct. Basically with about one third the units, you make the same total gross profit. So let's back up a little bit, we'll work the math together. So in the example, we're assuming that you're a promotional products distributor and your decorator is charging you a total of $5 for the decorated Bella Canvas 3001. You sold it for $9 and you made $4 per shirt, which is a 44% margin, not bad. And because you sold 8,000 shirts and you made $4 each, you made $32,000 of gross profit. So that math is pretty simple. So now let's go through the fleece example. So let's assume that you purchased the Bella Canvas 3719 hoodie decorated for $16 and you sell it for $28. Now keep in mind at retail, that item would probably sell for $50 or more. So you're actually delivering an excellent value at that price. And since you are making $12 of gross profit per sweatshirt, each one is like selling three t-shirts in the example. So at about 2,600 units, you make the same money. Now, some of you might be thinking that that, all, that sounds great, but what about the client's budget? What if they don't have $28 to spend per item? Well, we know that they have a budget of $72,000 because they were willing to buy 8,000 t-shirts at $9 each. So you might talk to them about spending that $72,000 differently. 
maybe a more curated item for a smaller group where the wow factor per person is going to be much higher. And we talk about this in the Fashion Apparel Masterclass lessons, so be sure to learn more there. And of course, you can always fall back on a less expensive item if you need to, but try to sell the premium fleece. I will bet that you will have more success than you might think. All right, enough math for one webcast. I'm just going to leave you with a couple of quick thoughts before I bring Tom on to discuss decoration. It, it really is time to stop thinking about fleece as seasonal. It's also time to break some paradigms around price per unit. Because again, fleece is a year-round staple item and given retail trends, your end users are more likely than ever to pay the higher price per unit. And finally, don't forget that how you decorate fleece can also influence how much you sell it for. Okay, so with that, we're gonna shift to de decoration. Now, you know, at Bella Canvas, we're huge believers that the best apparel products from our industry are produced when promotional distributors and decorators come together as partners. We are all incredibly fortunate to have so many creative experts in the decorator community in our industry that we get to leverage. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit with Tom about how you can take advantage of this. And I'm actually really excited to bring, uh, to bring in Tom Davenport. Um, hey, Tom. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Good. So many of you will recognize Tom. He's been a leader in decoration in our industry for many years, a successful entrepreneur, one of the founders of the Ink Kitchen, which is a group of leading contemporary thought leaders in the decoration space. And as a part of our overall strategy at Bella Canvas to integrate thinking about decoration into every aspect of our design process and content creation, We've actually recently added Tom to the Bella Canvas team to lead decoration innovation and concepts. So it's great to have him join this broadcast. And uh, there's gonna be a lot more information coming out about the work that we're doing to support all of you in the channel with more decoration insights. So stay tuned for that. But uh, for now, we'll get into some questions. Uh, so Tom, um, how are you? I'm doing well, uh, thanks for having me today. And I'm super excited to join the team. Awesome. Well, uh, as I said, we're incredibly glad to have you on the team and uh, we'll dive into some questions here. So obviously we're talking about fleece mm -hmm. and we often get questions about how to keep decoration affordable on fleece, given that the price for the garment is already higher than average. Uh, and of course, you know, decoration has to match uh, the item. So my first question is, since these items are more expensive than average, what are some ways that people can add creative decoration, which is also cost effective? Well, first thing, let the blank product speak for itself. Um, you're working with a great high quality fashion forward blank. Uh, let it do the work for you. Then beyond that, you can do so much with design, um, getting clever with graphical effects um, and color schemes. That's gonna really help you uh, produce a great result while keeping the cost down. And let's say that the distributor or the decorator has a little more budget to work with and, and their goal really is to create something that is premium, very, very retail in its look and feel. What would you recommend if uh, someone is interested in enhanced printing options on fleece? Well, I mean, there's so many different techniques to consider. Um, special effects printing, uh, you can use water-based uh, up to high density inks uh, to get different effects. Um, there are special embroidery techniques which utilize special threads and stitch patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's you know, a huge range of transfers, even appliques. Um, I really think that when you combine these techniques and let them interact together uh, in either very subtle or really obvious ways, that's where you can produce incredible results. And we've you know, talked about the fact that fashion fleece is so on trend with retail right now. Um, and you know, what are some of the biggest trends that you see in terms of decoration on those, you know, high fashion fleece items that are at retail that our customers might be able to replicate? Oh, we're seeing um, a ton of oversized embroidery, um, really cool stuff with, you know, using tonal color schemes um, or even, you know, really bright, bold colors. Again, special stitching effects, a lot of chain stitching and gradients. Um, appliques, chenille and twill appliques, um, these are techniques that really kind of create texture and totally elevate the finished product. Um, we're also seeing a lot of statement graphics. People are expressing themselves through what they wear. Uh, that's really always sort of been the power of graphic apparel. 
Um, I'm actually really excited because we're going to be covering a lot of these trends in uh, our upcoming video series. Oh, cool. So, you know, we always advise our distributor customers, our promo distributor customers, to view their decorator really as a partner, as early in the process as possible, given how important decoration is to the final product. You know, as a, as a decorator, as a longtime expert on decoration in the industry, what would you advise promo distributors uh, and the designers or the innovators in their businesses in terms of the best way for them to work with their decorators? Well, you said it, partner is the key word. Um, your decorator needs to be your partner from the get-go, from the onset of the project. Um, apparel decoration is really um, kind of, it's an art and it's a science. Um, and so what a lot of people don't understand is just because you can think of a concept, it doesn't necessarily mean that it can be produced. It may be technically impossible or just cost prohibitive to produce. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, also if you're not leaning on your decorator for their perspective, you're probably gonna be missing out on, on their ideas that can improve your design and even potentially reduce costs. So the bottom line I would say is that you do need to partner and collaborate with your decorator. Um, if your decorator is unwilling to partner with you and to collaborate, then you need to find another decorator. Awesome, great advice. All right, so last question. Let's yeah. assume that a decorator is creating the fleece item and selling it directly uh, in this case. How should decorators think about pricing fleas? Decorators need to account for the higher costs associated with um, when working on fleece. Every single action that you perform from, from printing, from receiving, uh, to printing, to packaging, it takes longer with fleece. Um, there is a higher chance of spoilage, so it requires more TLC in production, it slows production times. Uh, but the good news is that there's so much margin in fleece that um, you can still achieve a, a great high profit. Cool. That's great advice. Well, Tom, thanks. I know that we're going to be back together here in a little while in, uh, in Q&A, so, uh, so I'll see you then. Thanks, Chris. And uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Megan, and she's going to talk about how you can implement strategies to take advantage of selling fleece products. So, uh, Megan, you've got the floor. Thanks so much, Chris. Hey, everyone. Uh, Megan Spire here. Today, we're going to dissect the fleece trend as a whole and then break down how to sell into this category year round. In our last webinar, I touched on how important virtual selling skills are during this time and what has the biggest impact when presenting to a prospect digitally? Killer visuals. So we've created a customer ready deck to help you guys sell fleece. It's basically plug and play so you can instantly share the same powerful info you're learning here today with your customers. We explain the reason street fleece has a high perceived value, plus we speak to the latest style and color trends. Uh, we're gonna send you guys the link in the chat to download this deck, which will serve as a great selling tool. Uh, you can also feel free to drop in your own logo and then share it, of course, with customers. So let's talk about the rise in street fleece in the bigger context of fashion and culture and how this trend impacts our industry and the way that you guys are selling. We attribute the street fleece explosion to three main factors. One, the millennial and Gen Z influence on fashion and pop culture. Two, the prevalence of high-end designers who have embraced streetwear for their own collections. And three, the seismic shift during COVID uh, towards the majority of office employees starting to work remotely. First, we can thank millennials and Gen Zers for the rise in streetwear's popularity due to their influence on fashion. We're seeing a strong push towards comfort as we navigate busy schedules, stay active, and enjoy the perks of working from home. Many of the targeted ads we're seeing on social media are for brands that feature loungewear basics because that's what all the millennial and Gen Zers are feature featuring on their Instagram and TikTok accounts. And at Bella Canvas, we like to say that the jogger is the new legging. Remember when it was faux pas to wear leggings outside of the gym or your home? Now people wear joggers and sweats for Zoom meetings and look great doing it. Upstyled street fleece is the next evolution beyond athleisure. Premium fleece pieces like hoodies, sweatshirts, and joggers are lifestyle essentials that we're comfortable wearing for work, like you see me today, and on the street. The second driving factor, uh, 
really uh, influencing this trend is high fashion designers who've embraced streetwear. This includes Louis Vuitton. Uh, the fashion house brought on Virgil Abloh, the insanely talented founder of streetwear brand Off-White, as their men's artistic director. Similarly, Demna Vasalia, who now heads up Balenciaga, founded uh, Vediments and meshed runway couture and streetwear chic. Throw in Versace, Fendi, Ralph Lauren, all of these brands have collaborated with streetwear designers. How much more proof do you need that streetwear has truly integrated into luxury fashion? These design houses have given a huge nod to streetwear's cool factor and most importantly, its staying power. Lastly, streetwear has been disrupting fashion for a few years, but now it's really accelerating due to the majority of office employees working from home. Did you know that 62% of employed Americans say they're working remotely because of COVID-19, a percentage that has doubled since March? We're looking at the larger trend of casual dressing speeding up. Before the pandemic, studies suggested that there were about 65 million office workers and only 10% of them regularly worked from home. Even more compelling, remote work will be the new norm. Nearly 66% of these workers say they want to continue working remotely. And a recent study from MIT indicated that more than half don't expect to return to their offices full time at all. The percentage of employers who've made these flexible schedules possible has risen from, risen from 39 to 57%. So what does this mean for you? Street fleece is the comfort trend of the now and the future. Workplaces were already moving towards a more casual way of dressing, but we estimate that the pandemic accelerated this shift by five years or more. It's time to tap into this shift and differentiate your product offering with this high margin category. So for those of you who are not active participants in this category, let's review some tips and tricks for selling fleece. First, lead with fleece. What does that mean? Don't wait for your customers to ask you about it. When they come to you for branded merchandise, you should be suggesting a fleece item every single time. Right now, fleece might not even be on their minds, especially in these hot summer months, but it should actually be on their radar all year long. Traditionally, outerwear begins to sell late summer into early winter. Trade basic fleece is heavier weight, which makes sense that it would be sold during the outerwear season. However, today's mid-weight fashion fleece styles can be worn all 12 months. The bottom line, a logoed sweatshirt and jogger are now a fashion statement. Fleece is no longer just a seasonal cold weather item. And as a branded apparel seller, your customers expect you to be well informed on what's current. Make the case for why fleece styles open up so many new branding opportunities for them and can better help them achieve their financial goals. Another way to succeed selling fleece, sample, sample, sample. During our last webinar, we talked about the challenges of selling today now that in-person meetings and networking events are on pause. We encourage taking advantage of the unboxing experience to wow high value prospects. This is especially impactful when it comes to selling fleece. I hope you've all experienced Bella Canvas sponge fleece for yourself. If you have, I'm sure you can agree that with one touch, you're obsessed. Your customers will be wowed when they unbox, touch and feel one of our fleece pieces. Sampling is especially effective in getting a customer to understand the value in paying a premium for quality fleece. You can quite literally feel the difference. And just as our industry has seen a shift away from carded open-end trade basics into premium tees over the last several years, the very same conversion is happening in the fleece category today. If you aren't out there offering premium branded solutions in this category, someone else is going to be. Because at the end of the day, premium fleece is all about comfort and end users want to wear fleece that feels cozy and luxurious. And lastly, when you're selling fleece, don't forget to talk numbers. Walk your customers through the value of cost per impression and the margin potential. Both are crucial. You already know that logo apparel is one of the most cost effective advertising mediums out there. Since premium fleece is worn year round, it can increase brand awareness, especially since it is worn over a t-shirt. Plus, as Chris detailed, both you and your customer can earn more gross profit by selling fleece over tees, printing the same number of units. If you take anything away from our session today, it's that fleece is more profitable. The numbers talk. When we doubled our fleece business again last year, we knew this category would continue growing and responded by injecting more options into our assortment. Now the Bella Canvas Street Fleece Collection features more than 25 on-trend styles, 50 fashion forward colors, and is made from our signature sponge fleece that most of you ask for by name.
Our customers tell us we've become a destination for their fleece projects due to the breadth of style and color versus most other suppliers who only offer the basics for the most part. To give you guys a different perspective, we spoke with Zach Morgan, the sales manager at CC Creations, one of the largest custom screen printing and embroidery companies in Texas. He shares the reasons why they view fleece as such a significant growth opportunity. He also delved into some of the tactics they use to sell more fleece and make higher profits. Quick preview, they're successfully selling fleece into multiple demographics during this time, even while it's this hot out. So let's check out the interview. Hi, Zach. Hey, how's it going? Good. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, not a problem at all. How long have you been in the industry? So I've been in the industry for about seven years now. Uh, been at CC Creations the entire time. Started in sales and moved into a marketing director position and now I'm part of the sales management team here. And how have you seen the business change over that time? Uh, the business has changed quite a bit. It's been crazy. Uh, I know we're talking fleeces today and the crazy thing is, is like, over the last couple of years, it's just been kind of insane. Just this over the last year, we were selling fleeces even into the beginning of the shutdown of the pandemic, which selling fleeces in Texas after January has never been heard of. A longer season, it sounds like. Oh yeah, 100%. We saw it start earlier. We've seen it continue to push and it's no longer just a, I need to buy this because it's cold. It's become a, I need to buy this because I like wearing fleeces and I can figure out an excuse to wear it even in Texas anytime I can. What markets are you having uh, success selling fleece into? So much like everyone else, uh, finding the markets that are still active and are confidently moving forward can sometimes be a little bit difficult, but we are. Uh, school, uh, school spirit, even with a lot of remote learning, but then surprisingly, there's a lot of corporate markets that are uh, doing well, purchase stuff. But we're seeing even with the work from home environment, businesses want to still make their employees feel appreciated. And Zach, can you share with us a little bit about how you see fleece in terms of profitability for your business? For our business, it's been awesome. Um, we find ourselves with fleece orders where because it's a trending object uh, item and people are requesting it, and it, a lot of times if you let them know what you have available, uh, you find yourself putting that product in those customers' hands, but you also find yourself trading uh, what would might have been a long sleeve t-shirt order with a fleece order. And that does two things. A, the cost of a long sleeve t-shirt to print to a customer versus that of a fleece. Uh, you're going to find yourself making a lot more profit on the fleece just because of the overall margin on that uh, item. But B, and probably the bigger thing, but sometimes missed is, by putting a better product in your customer's hand and letting them know about a better product for what they're looking to do, uh, that's how you build a customer for life. And so um, with the fleece cat category growing, that's where we found a lot of opportunities specifically. What can you share with us about uh, the fleece category's growth uh, within your business specifically? So I mentioned before we're from Texas, so we didn't think necessarily we'd see huge growth in the fleece category, but in just the past year, we've seen from Q1 last year and going into Q2 this year, we sold 10 times as much fleece. And so, uh, and that's kind of incredible. What selling tactics have worked for you? Let's say we've got a listener or a viewer today who uh, has never sold fleece before. What tips can you give them? I would say first thing is make sure you're familiar with the product. So make sure you have your own sample set so that you can familiarize yourself and know why it's different. The other thing is then educate your customer. Make sure you understand what their goals are and what they're looking for in any type of decorated piece. And if possible, I know it's not always during these times, is try to get your customer a sample as well. Uh, just feeling uh, a premium fleece versus the pure basic oftentimes can sell it alone. Uh, Zach, do you have any final thoughts, tips, tricks you wanna share with the viewers? Just keep after it, everyone. I know that this isn't a fun period of time. Uh, it makes wins a lot better. And uh, the best thing you can do is be there for your customers, uh, regardless if they're purchasing. Know that you're there to help them out uh, and then start gearing up for fleece season. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. Not a problem at all. Well, I think that was a pretty compelling interview. A big thanks to Zach for sharing his experience selling premium fleece and enjoying those high profit margins. He's actually online watching right now and can answer any questions that you guys may have in the chat. Yay. Thank you, Megan. That was all really great. Thanks, Chris and Tom. So we would love to kick off with a Q&A with 
all three of them, Megan, Chris, and Tom. Uh, we saw a few questions come through the chat, so we'll begin with some of those. Um, but if you have any other questions for the three of them, please ask in the chat, and uh, we will get to those throughout this Q&A. So while some of you are writing in more questions, here is a quick poll to see what you all want to hear about for our next webinar. And we'll leave that on for a while to see what you guys think and then kind of see what the results are at the end. So I'll just get right to it. Okay, first question. Okay, I sell to high schools and if the product is not in the 15 to 20 bucks range decorated because of budget, the school won't look at it. Oh, bummer. How would you convince them to try Bella Canvas fleece? I'll take this one. I think in this case, you have to challenge the customer. It's the same conversation we started having about t-shirts 10 years ago. There's an appetite for premium. And if you don't try, they'll never be able to gauge that success. So let's say they've got an order. I would say trial it, you know, do 70% of the order in the historical trade basic item that you would normally do, but seed and, and trial some premium apparel uh, and and really, you know, see the results. Let let the school experience that for themselves. I can guarantee you, if those students are walking through and they touch and feel the difference, uh, they're going to want that premium item. And if we consider what you know the the apparel offering in schools looked like, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was all you know a lot of the trade basics that you see in our industry. Whereas now. In high schools, kids are wearing Nike and Under Armour. So I think that the mentality has also changed. And so we just need to uh, you know, challenge our customers and get them to think a little bit differently about the value and what the ultimate end goal is for that um, brand awareness. Perfect. Thank you, Megan. Um, OK, I have a couple of printing questions, it looks like. so. This person asked, I have a hard time printing on fleece. Are there any entry level tips you could give me? You want me to take that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, so first off, you're not alone. Everybody has a difficult time printing on fleece, um, but there are things that you can do to make, uh, to make it easier. Number one thing is control flash temperatures on press. That's going to reduce misregistration, uh, scorching. Those are really the primary causes of spoilage. Okay, perfect. And then let's see, let's just throw in another one here for you, Tom. How do you get fleece to stick to the palette with screen printing? Um, well, first off, I recommend using a, I would recommend using a specifically formulated um, spray adhesive, um, either a mist type or a web type. But when I say specifically formulated for fleece, it's a product that will, will hold the, the garment onto the platen without leaving a residue. That's most important. Okay, perfect. I hope all of you beginners out there are taking some notes from Tom. Um, all right, okay, big question. We've already gotten a few of these. When will fleece inventory be available? Uh, maybe I'll take that one. Um, so, so good news, because of the growth in fleece the past two years, as we mentioned, uh, in the dialogue, we actually had been building inventory pretty substantially. So um, the depth of inventory coming into this whole pandemic period was probably the highest out of any of our product categories. So what we've seen is that demand has recovered a lot faster than we thought, um, which has created some holes in inventory, but we're working really hard to get those filled. But we feel actually pretty good about fleece specifically for as we kind of get into the peak season, middle of uh, middle of October, end of October. So feeling pretty good at, at this point. Okay, great. And then, you know, I know we also get a lot of questions on t-shirts, you know, the inventory on tees in general. Um, is there any update on how that inventory is gonna be looking? Yeah, Claire, great uh, question. We're getting a lot of questions about it from customers. I see it in the chat. Um, and we were taking them daily and, and, you know, just to be very, very transparent when, when the whole pandemic began, you know, we talked to our wholesale partners, we talked to our biggest promotional products, uh, customers, our decorator customers to try to get a sense of what everyone thought was going to happen. And, uh, and I think most companies agreed or felt we were going to see a really sharp decline in demand. And then a slow recovery, so getting back to normal really at the end of, of this year, like a six-month recovery. 
And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm happy to report on, on one hand that what we saw as a brand was a recovery in about 60 days. And so demand for our brand came back very quickly, a lot faster than we thought. And uh, that put us behind, you know, and, and we're going to be completely transparent about it throughout the process. We are doing everything we can to catch up. Every single week, we see the numbers rolling out of production increasing. We see our fill rates in the industry improving. Uh, but it's going to take us, you know, the better part of the rest of the year to get back to that, you know, higher mid 90% service level that we were maintaining coming into the pandemic. But, you know, I just assure everybody we are doing it as fast as we can, as aggressively as we can. And we want to get back in stock so you can go out there and sell. Perfect. Thanks for addressing that, Chris. I'm sure a lot of people have been eager to hear from us. I think so. um, also, I can see that uh, Zach from CC Creations is on the chat. So if anyone has any questions for him, we just had that um, interview we showed with him and Megan. So he's on if anyone has questions there. OK, next question. What can we expect to see in fleece through the remainder of the year? So we have two uh, forward fashion launches in the fleece category. We're doing these really cool uh, suede joggers and then a suede uh, crew neck drop shoulder pullover. And then um, most of you have probably noticed that we pushed our 2021 new product launch from September when we would normally uh, go live to January uh, as a result of COVID. So just around the corner, you'll see additional uh, fleece colors added to all of our best sellers as a part of that product launch as well. Perfect, thank you, Megan. Um, I'm seeing quite a few printing questions come through. So Tom, everyone mm -hmm. or a few people are asking, you know, do you prefer screen printing, heat press, Embroidery, what are, what's your advice to everyone who's watching um, on how you would use those different printing methods for different fleece items? Well, like I said, they're, they're all really tools in your toolbox um, and you should utilize them and utilize them together, let them work together. Um, there's endless combinations. Um, so I don't have a preference of screen print versus embroidery, they're all great options and it's just what's appropriate for the overall design. And would would the quantity of the order have anything to do with printing method? Would that impact efficiency? Yeah, quantity always matters. Um, you know, with screen printing, uh, you've got, you're really, really heavy on the setup side. So a lot of the cost goes into the setup. Um, the setup to print a, uh, a job of 500 pieces is the same as what's required to print 50,000 pieces. So there are some upfront costs associated with screen printing. It, with embroidery, you've got digitizing fees to consider. So quantity always matters. Perfect. Um, okay, Megan, you're wearing our tie-dye. So someone is asking, how long do you think the tie-dye trend will last? I think we've got a, a, a ways to go. If you guys, I mean, I'm on social media, in real life, it seems like anything that can be tie-dyed, people are tie-dying, tie-dying. Joggers, sweatshirts, t-shirts, bags, masks. So um, as we look to the future uh, for additions in forward fashion, as well as what we are uh, offering in retail, uh, we are absolutely planning for more tie-dye in our future. Perfect. I'm excited about that. I love tie-dye especially now in the COVID era and everyone's at home, I just feel like the last six months, all you've seen is everyone tie-dyeing literally everything they own. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> DIY activity. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, I've got so many questions. Do you sell any fleece products that would work with sublimation? So for sublimation, and maybe Tom and I can kind of tag team this, you want a high poly content. Uh, ours is a 52-48 blend. Um, so Tom, from your perspective, is that, I don't believe that's gonna give you the crispest uh, print, um, but would that still work pretty well for that method? Yeah, you're exactly right. So first off with sublimation, you're working with lighter colored garments, typically you know, white fabrics are gonna sublimate the best. Um, the the poly content is, is very important. But it really depends on the effect that you're going for. So if you want, you know, really, really bright, vivid colors, then you need to be working with 100% poly, polyester uh, fabric. But if you're doing something that's more toned down, 
uh, it would absolutely work on a, on a 5240. Great. Maybe a little bit more of a vintage look. Exactly. Perfect. Um, I did see a few questions come in about catalogs and we have moved digital. So especially it's really working out for us in the virtual era. Um, we do have a digital catalog if anyone is interested in that. And I also see a few questions asking about where to purchase wholesale. You can purchase direct with us. We have an account sign up page. You can also order through distributors um, or if you're going to your uh, decorator shop, you, you can order through them too. And if you want to locate uh, the distributor closest to you, you can go to resources and then look at distributor locator and you'll be able to find someone uh, in your state. Yes, and that's on bellacanvas.com. We also have a product locator on our website too, if you're looking for something very specific. It'll show you by distributor who has it in stock. Yeah. It's really handy. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's really great. Um, what is the likelihood we see tie-dye options soon? Any more? Well, we just launched this one. It sold out very quickly. I do know that we have replenishment on the horizon. I don't know that date off the top of my head, but uh, we'll get it for you and circle back. Great. Um, okay. Lots of repeat print questions. Okay. Okay, it's been, this person says, it's been really, really hard to find the newer ladies edit items. Not sure if that's the right name. I'm, I'm assuming female edit. Um, that one of, or from the last webinars, we have checked SNS, Sandmar, and Alpha. When will all of the new styles advertised by Bella Canvas be available for distributors to actually sell? Yeah, Megan, maybe I'll jump in on that one. Uh, so the, the female edit campaign is arguably one of the most successful campaigns that we've ever done. Uh, good news, bad news. Good news, it was very successful. Bad news, we uh, we broke uh, in terms of service level and a lot of those styles faster than we thought. So um, the other good news is that we we have many of those on the highest priorities in our uh, production operations. So uh, they're actually coming back in stock as we speak. Uh, but I think in another six, seven weeks, you know, we'll be in the position that we were you know, four or five weeks ago. But thank you to everybody in the industry for being such big supporters of that campaign. It was a good one. I love that campaign. Um, okay, someone asked where in Texas are they referring to San Antonio, Texas is hot. And this, I'm assuming this is about um, Zach at CC Creations. I think he's in College Station. College Station, yeah. Um, but I'm actually a fellow Texan myself and I can say something that's different about Texas versus where we are in LA. A lot of people in Texas have AC and in LA, a lot of people don't. So when you come back inside after being in the Texas heat all day, it's pretty chilly. And I always have a sweatshirt that I throw on in the summer. I know it's crazy, but I do. I'm also constantly cold. So I definitely am a firm believer in fleece being year round. Um, okay, we have so many more questions coming in. Um, do we have new swatch cards? So we have actually an abundance of 2020 swatch cards left over. So those are available for you guys current to our assortment. For 2021, we are going to be adding in a, uh, an insert into those color cards and they'll be available beginning of the new year. Perfect. If you want to get your hands on color cards now, you can contact customer service and we can get some out to you. Great. Hey Claire, I saw. Uh, I was watching the board. I saw a bunch of questions come in around pricing of T-shirts, um, and references back to our example around pricing. So I just wanted to talk about that for a second because uh, there were several comments that people routinely sell decorated Bella Canvas three thousand one T-shirts at twenty three dollars, twenty five dollars, and totally get it. If you are selling directly to the consumer. Uh, that's absolutely the price range in which you should sell. I mean, we see decorated T-shirts that aren't as uh, as well-made as Bella Canvas T-shirts sell for $40 all the time in retail stores. The example that we walk through is a wholesale example of where you're in something like a larger program. You know, we used 8,000 units uh, as the example, and you're you're selling it wholesale, you know, in more of a B2B environment. but. But you know, kudos to all of you out there who are pricing those to consumers in retail at twenty-five dollars. 
you're doing exactly what you should be doing. Perfect. Yes, I did see a bunch of those questions. I think the wholesale people were confusing their retail people and I'm glad we cleared that Claire, I, I saw a question that says, can you do direct to garment on fleece? And uh, I wanted to snag that one. Uh, for uh, this past product launch, uh, this time last year, we actually introduced our DTG fleece. So rather than doing brand new styles, we actually introduced DTG white, DTG black and DTG uh, dark gray in our best selling fleece styles. And the inside is still the super soft uh, sponge fleece that you guys know and love. But on the face of the fabric, we actually did that in 100% cotton. So it's perfect for digital printing. Perfect. Yes. Um, that's great. Okay, Tom, here's a question for you. How can we make heat transfer last longer? It really depends on what type of heat transfer you're working with. There are plenty of options on the market that will last as long as screen printing. So if you were doing some sort of a home heat transfer kit, producing your own transfers, probably not gonna last very long, but it really depends on if you're purchasing from a quality uh, producer of heat transfers, they're doing their job and it will last. Okay, perfect. Um, when you, tie-dye colored fabrics, do you bleach first or do dyes typically show up well on color? Anyone, maybe Tom? Say it one more time, sorry. The, when you tie-dye colored fabrics, do you uh, use bleach first or do dyes typically show up well on color? That actually is not my area of expertise with tie-dye. Chris, maybe you know? So we, we did uh, this tie-dye, we took our finished uh, DTG white uh, garment and then did the wash process on it. I'll have to talk to our fabric experts. That's a great question. I actually don't know that one off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm almost 100% certain you can tie-dye on color. Obviously, whatever dye colors you're using are going to show up you know, more brilliantly on white, of course, as a, as a completely neutral background, but, uh, and you'll get all kinds of interesting outcomes when you tie dye on color, but you can do it. Yes. I've actually seen a few people um, share on Instagram with us. They would do, I think I saw a couple of people do like blue and purple tie dye on athletic Heather sweatpants. Um, and then I saw some people do kind of like a bleach mm -hmm. acid look on some black uh, fleece items. So, I think it's all an experiment. You just kind of have to go into it with no expectations, and that way it probably turns out better. If you yeah, it's part of the fun. Let it, yeah, just let it do its thing. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. How does back ordering work? Or I guess pre-ordering on our website. Um, so they would have to do that through customer service or through one of our distributor partners. Uh, we can uh, get in contact with you after this and, and walk through the process step by step. Perfect. Um, okay, let's see a few more. Um, I saw a few people ask about this watching this webinar later. We will um, send an email out with a link so you can rewatch it. And it will also be on the uh, Bella Canvas Live landing page so it's bellacamus.com backslash live and you can see in the archive section at the bottom of the page and we will also be uploading it to youtube um and if you want you can keep asking more questions on our youtube video once we lot upload it there and i'll be answering some questions there but i think i'm seeing a lot of repeat questions so I think that could probably wrap it up for today. Thank everyone, or thank all of you guys for being on this live and to all of our attendees for watching. It has been such um, a fun time. And yeah, we will see you all right back here for the next broadcast. So thank you guys. Have a great week, everyone. See you soon. Thank you.